Hi everybody, welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to be looking at a past exam question on the menstrual cycle. Now this particular question I have chosen is a little bit harder. Um, I know it feels like all menstrual cycle questions are difficult, but this one in particular, because there is no labels, there is very little information on the graph that they are providing you. And so you really have to know your work really well to to be able to do well in this kind of question. And in actual fact, this is going to be two questions because if you look, there is 2.3 and 2.4. And I'm going to do both those questions um, for you today because they're both linked to the female reproductive system. And they're just the questions we, you know, we really suck at. We, 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 despise these questions when we see them in assessments. Now, if you do like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And if you are in matric, really looking to make a difference in your studying and make it simpler and faster, you should think about getting my cheat sheet study guide. It gets the name from making studying feel like you're cheating. It's just so easy. I summarize everything. I make it easy to understand and revise from and you can get a copy of that on my website missangler.co.za or you can join my membership um, where you'll get a copy for free. So let's jump into the question. Um, 2.3 says the graph below shows the levels of two hormones that are secreted by the um, pituitary gland during the menstrual cycle. So we've got to think what two hormones come from the pituitary gland only that are involved in the menstrual cycle. And let's just little make a little note alongside here. That's going to be LH and FSH, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Um, but let's see how we can use those in the graph. Now it says hormone levels during the menstrual cycle over 28 days. So this is a full cycle we're looking at here. And we've got hormone A and we've got hormone B. Um, the tricky part is they haven't told us who is who. Now, before I even go into answering the questions, let me help you identify who is who um, out of the two. So let's look at uh, hormone A. Um, you will notice that hormone A has two peaks. It has a peak around over here, day seven. Oh, no, actually, more. that's not day five, day six. And on day 14 versus our other hormone over here, uh, hormone B, which has only one peak, and it peaks just on or just before um, day 14. Now, the way in which I like to teach this in my class and how I want you to remember this is that um, FSH is the hormone that peaks first in your menstrual cycle. Out of all four hormones in the menstrual cycle, it is the hormone that peaks first. So, so you know it's FSH because it will have the first peak always. And you also know it's FSH out of the two pituitary hormones because it has two peaks, whereas LH only has one peak. And LH peaks just before or on day 14, and that is because of its function. LH causes ovulation. So again, we not only need to know where these hormones are made, but we need to know how to read them off a graph, depending on where they peak during the menstrual cycle. So I've now identified who they are. Let's go into the questions and see what we need to do with it. So state two functions of hormone B. So you actually did need to spend some time breaking this down, um, which hormone is which. So what are the two functions of B? So hormone B is LH. And LH has two functions. The first one I mentioned to you was ovulation. And I think a lot of us don't know what the second function is because you kind of sit there and go, uh, I, ovulation. But no, LH is there for ovulation. But luteinizing, I want you to think of the corpus luteum. It's responsible for the formation of our corpus luteum. Now, the corpus luteum, if we have forgotten, is when the graphene follicle has burst, the ovum has been released from the follicle, and now we are left with an empty structure called the corpus luteum. But in order to actually like make the corpus luteum, because it's a glandular tissue now, because it's going to secrete a hormone, 
How do you turn it from a follicle to a glandular tissue? Well, that's where LH comes in. LH causes the graphene follicle, once it's empty, to turn into the corpus luteum and start secreting hormones. Moving on to the next question, it says 232, explain why a female who is struggling to get pregnant, A, may be given pills containing hormone A. So again, we needed to identify what hormone A was. Now, um, the first thing I want you to notice about this question is it is an explain question in the beginning here, and it's for three marks, which means we need to give a statement, and then we need to provide two reasons because that's how the mark allocation is going to work with this style of question. So, explain why a female who would be struggling to get pregnant may be given pills containing FSH. Well, if she has high levels of FSH, because that's why she's taking these tablets, it will increase her FSH, it means we're going to make more follicles, or the follicles will grow better. If you want to say they develop better or they develop completely, like they finish development, then there will be more ovum or over. And you could say not just more ovum. Again, you could see a healthier over. You could say more well-developed over. But that's the goal of taking FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. They do like these questions a lot, by the way. They really like to ask people, um, they like to ask questions about people who are taking contraception or they like to ask about fertility. So we see this a lot in exams and you should always be prepared for it. The second one says, explain why a female who is struggling to get pregnant will have her levels of hormone B constantly monitored. Well, if B is luteinizing hormone, right? So it is the hormone that is creating ovulation. Again, let's look at the mark allocation. We've got two marks. So we need a statement and a reason. Why would we want to record her LH level? Well, we want to record her LH level because if the LH level is high, right, it means that she has ovulated, which means she has the opportunity to become pregnant. Now, why would we want to know that if we are struggling to get pregnant? Well, you want to know when you've ovulated if you want to fall pregnant. Moving on to our next question, 2.3.3. Explain how the levels of hormone A on days 0 to 5 will differ in a pregnant female. Now, this is interesting. Let's go back to our graph here. So, hormone A is follicle-stimulating hormone, and it says from day 0 to 5, which basically means this section over here up until about my dot, or just before. Now, this is a very tricky question if you're not paying attention and you only reference the... Uh, hormones in the graph, okay? It is an explained question. So remember, let's look at the allocation of marks. It is three marks. So this explained question must have one statement followed by two reasons. Okay, look how interesting this is. If we don't have the depth of knowledge, then we wouldn't be able to answer this properly. Explain how the levels of hormone A on day zero to five will differ. So our opening statement for that is going to be the FSH levels are going to be low. So we've made a statement. We've said they're low. But now let's give some reasons for this. Why are the levels low? They are low because if you are pregnant, you are producing progesterone. And progesterone levels are high while you are pregnant. And if progesterone levels are high, they inhibit... FSH. Therefore, no new follicles. And you can see that it's not as simple as just answering that question 
with the hormones on these graphs. So you see why this is a hard question that I've chosen, because you had to have a bit more knowledge, a bit of depth of negative feedback to know that it's not just about FSH. FSH cannot control its levels. Another hormone on the negative feedback seesaw must make it go up or down. And when you are pregnant specifically, the hormone that you make in huge volumes is progesterone. So progesterone is going to keep the FSH levels low, which then inhibits any follicles from being made. Now, normally um, I wouldn't do two questions in one video, but I'm going to do another question, which is going to be 2.4. And I thought it made the most sense to do this question because it's a continuation of the menstrual cycle and the hormones involved in it. Um, but let's have a look at what 2.4 needs us to do. So it says, describe the secretion of ovarian hormones and their role in the menstrual cycle for five marks. Now, this isn't actually a difficult uh, answer to give because it's actually just like recall. It's just, it's just learning what the hormones do um, and their effect on the menstrual cycle. It's not an application question like we just worked with now on this graph. So... Five marks, we need to say five things, and at least two of those five things need to be identifying the actual names of these hormones. So let's keep our eyes on the mark allocation. It's five things, so it's a full paragraph answer. Um, and so what are our two ovarian hormones? The ovarian hormones are estrogen and progesterone. Um, but we're not just going to get marks for naming them. We need to say what they do and where they come from. I think that's the key here is the word describe is not just telling us what they do. You have to give a full picture. You must show the mark and you understand where the hormone came from and what it does in terms of the menstrual cycle. So where does estrogen come from? So first things first, it is the follicle, right, that is going to secrete estrogen. Now that's already probably two marks because you're talking about the follicle secreting estrogen. The next mark there would be linked to what estrogen, do estrogen does, which is it maintains and um, it also regrows the endometrium. The next ovarian hormone is going to be progesterone, but where does it come from? Well, the corpus luteum, that secretes progesterone. Again, those are two marks, these sentences, because you're talking about the structure, which is a mark, and then progesterone, which is a mark. What does progesterone do? Well, it maintains the endometrium, but it also makes it more vascular and glandular. And what that means is vascular means like blood vessels and glandular means more glands. So it makes it more soft and squishy for the fertilized ovum, if there is one, to sink into the endometrium and be implanted. And actually, if I went back and sort of marked this with my red pen so you can see where all the marks lie, you get one for follicle, one for estrogen, one for its function. So that's already three out of five. You get one for corpus luteum, one for progesterone, which is already five out of five. But you can go even further and put in what progesterone does, which is it maintains the endometrium, making it more vascular and glandular. So there's actually like six options that you could have given. And often there is a little bit of wiggle room in those longer answers. You can actually give more. Um, and then you allow the market to look for the correct answers. Now, here is a memo of those questions we've just done. I'll just draw your attention to our last question over here. You can see there were actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven options you could have given there, which is great for you because it means that you can actually give quite a bit of detail and still get all of your marks, which is great. But as always, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I will see you all again soon. Bye.